So let's uh, let's actually kind of break this down and start chopping away at this, right? So let's get sculptural. Um, if I want to change an object layer in AutoCAD, it's far more simple than in Rhino, I guess, where you have to select it and then right click on the layer and say change object layer. Here, if I want to change the layer, all I have to do is just go up to this little pull down and put it on the layer I want to put it on. You just pull it down, you click on the layer you want it on, and that's that. So go back to zero, zero layer. Select it, go to object, object layer. Be aware that after I select an object and I change the layer, it goes back to the layer that you had on. So if I draw another line or polyline, it's going to be on the zero layer. See how it's white? What I have to do if I want to draw on that layer is change this layer panel to read as object. So you click it, you click on object, that makes it the active layer. There's no checkbox like in Rhino where you double click on the layer and you know that it's active. The way you know it's active is if it shows up there. So I'm going to quickly go back into layer properties and create a new layer new and this one I'm going to call construction construction and I'm going to change that color to blue and close so here's why I called it construction yes click on layer properties go to that button right there new layer So the reason I create a construction layer is because sometimes in AutoCAD when you're working in two dimensions, um, it's beneficial to have a layer that you only put there um, in order to snap off of. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If this is what I want to create, and I want to create these cuts in the top side, Right, so they're a foot and a half wide and seven feet deep. A construction layer, I would activate the construction layer and a construction line would be placed like this. Activate the line command. Or, well, there are a couple other ways you can do it too. But to start off with, I'm gonna do it with just lines. Activate the line command. And this part is just like Rhino. If I wanna place something a certain distance off of a corner, all I have to do is hover over that object snap, right? Hovering over the endpoint. Then I pull my mouse down, not clicking yet. Notice how it says extension. Extensions are a sub feature of your uh, polar tracking, where if you have object snap on, just like smart track, you just pull down tell it how far you want to go, so seven feet for me. Oh, look at that, that didn't do it. Why isn't that working? Perpendicular, seven feet. Not working. Is it at seven feet? Why is that not working? Well, that'll draw. Anyway, it, that used to work. <coughs> Why is it going there? Maybe without ortho on. Okay, odd. <coughs> anyway, so rather than doing that, I'll make it simple. I don't know what's different about this from before, but uh, instead of trying to figure that out, let's just draw it and move it into place. So I click on that corner and I click on the opposite corner. Now I have a blue line on top of my red line. So this brings up another thing. How do I select one line versus the other? So if I click on that blue line, it selects only the blue line. So this is a little bit different than Rhino where you have to figure out where your coincident lines are. 
in order to get rid of them. So you don't have a selection menu here. So if I have two lines that are over top of one another and I only want the blue line, but perhaps maybe my draw order, bring to front red line is showing up on top, this is how you get rid of it. Um, well, if I turn my red object off, I can see it, select it, and move it down. Or if it's on and I select that and I know that there's a blue line there, I can deselect by holding shift and selecting the red box where the blue line does not occur. Does that make sense? Okay, so after you've got it selected, whether or not you turn the red line off, um, all you have to do is activate a move command. So I type in move, hit enter, click in space. And if you have ortho mode on, all you should have to do is just type in the distance. Um, if you have polar on, you snap to a polar track and you type in how far. So seven feet, hit enter. Okay, so no matter how far I go down there, it is connected. Questions on that? Deselect? Escape. Oh, yeah, to deselect everything is escape, yeah. Yes. I don't understand your question. Yeah, because now you have the blue line and the red line. Yeah. Right, yeah. You you All right, so it'll show up blue. If you select it, that shows up blue. If I select the red one, you can still see the red line in it. Does that make sense? I'll talk through some of the nuances of that if you need it or if everyone needs it, then I'll talk through it more. Yes. no idea what you're saying I need to see it so um, I'll pause the video here make sure everybody has this line and then um, if there's something I need to go over with everyone I'll do it before we move on the key here is workflow right so like everything that I'm teaching you I'm teaching it to you really really slow because it's the first time that I'm teaching you the command but I'm making certain decisions because once you start doing them really fast you'll find that there are really huge time savings to doing things certain ways. So I'm going to introduce another type of construction line where it's not just this blue datum line that's seven feet deep in the space. Um, it's actually, I think it actually is called a construction line. Yeah, so it's, it's called a construction line. So if you go under the uh, home panel for lines or whatever it's called, and right here it's called construction line. Um, click that. And what it's going to ask you for is uh, to specify a point. And there are a couple of settings that says horizontal, vertical, angled, um, bisecting. Don't worry about the bisecting stuff, but horizontal or vertical is kind of important because when you specify a point, look at what it does. Okay, so no matter where I draw this line or no matter how far I pull it, it gives me a datum line across the entire model space. No matter how far I zoom out or in, that line will be there in three-dimensional space. Does that make sense? So it's, it's hugely powerful for workflows like I'm showing you. So when I pull it up and click, no matter how far I go out, that line exists. Okay, double middle mouse click, it brings me back to the, um, the geometry that I drew, but it ignores this infinite line that I drew. Okay, kind of significant. I can zoom all the way out, and there is no end because when I double click my middle mouse wheel, it brings me back to this geometry. It's important to understand. Anyway, so um, now we're actually trying to create this thing. Um, 
I need to move this first line five feet out. And then I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies of that line. I'll show you why when, when we get to it. But, um, so I've got eight copies of that line. Let me first move it. So I activate the move command, click here, and I start pulling down my polar track, type in five feet. So now that line, oh, that is really hard for you guys to see, huh? Sorry, that's way too deep. Um, just sidetracking for 20 seconds here. The reason I use blue is because construction lines should barely be visible. So when I'm working on a black background, a blue, a blue line is actually pretty nice because it, it kind of falls away from the red, which you can very clearly see. So I know what my object is versus the information that I'm only drawing just to get to something else. Just heads up on that. Let me change the color for you. So blue, I'll change to cyan. Okay, you can see that one better. So anyway, um, I've got that. Now let's talk about array. So array is right here, the rectangular array. There's a polar array as well and a path array. But uh, the rectangular array is going to allow us to just copy a bunch of times to the right. So I activate the array command. It tells me select objects. So I select this. I hit enter. So, and forgive me because I, I don't use this format very much, but... Uh, what it's going to ask you for is all the information that you would typically put in in Rhino sequentially. You know, how many in the X, how many in the Y, how many in the Z. All you do is just modify these properties at the top and change it to what it needs to be. So I mentioned I need eight of them spaced horizontally. So that would be eight columns. See that? So the spacing in between would be one foot six inches. Rows, we don't need multiple rows. We only need one or we're gonna get duplicates. Levels, that's in the Z direction. We only need one. And if there's only one element, you don't need to worry too much about the uh, spacing in between because it doesn't really matter. So let's just double check our PDF here. See that it looks right, that looks right to me. And when you're done, you hit close array. So now you've got eight lines spaced one foot six inches apart. Oh, whoop, sorry. Um, but they're in a group. So I typically, when I do an array and I know I'm done with it, I like to explode it. So when you type in explode, there's an explode in Rhino, exactly the same thing. It just breaks them apart so that I can select them individually. Wow, why can't you see that? That is really weird. There's some graphic resolution thing going on here that's really odd. So I'm just gonna override that color again. I'll make it, I'll try yellow. That's so odd, you can't really see them. Let me know if you guys have trouble on your screen seeing that kind of line, a vertical construction line. Shouldn't look like that. That one looks fine. Anyway. Huh? That's weird. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, must be the resolution. So my, my resolution must, must have this mid-range where the line is too thin. Um, my line thicknesses aren't on. Anyway, so um, what I want to do is make sure that you guys have this down. And then I'm gonna move, so this is all just construction stuff. What I'm gonna do next is show you how do you draw profiles and then cut them to complete a full you know, profile view. And it doesn't seem all that important now, but I'll show you why it's so important in a second. So um, 
let's I'm gonna stop the video here and get you caught up to this and then we'll move on.